Hi, I'm Karen Green, and I'm here with Bill Waters, who is the director of the North Star Clubhouse here in Portland, Oregon. Bill, what is a clubhouse in this context? In this context, a clubhouse is a formally known as a psychiatric rehabilitation program. And I say that because it's not designed to be a clinical program that would focus on the alleviation of symptoms, many times with medications, many times with therapy. A clubhouse is basically a place where people are coming and performing volunteer work to build their skills and their confidence so that they can begin to look at carrying those skills and with that confidence back into the community. And where does this idea of Clubhouse come from? Clubhouses were developed many, many years ago. Uh, They were the first uh, peer support group in the United States. They were actually started by a group of patients in Rockland State Hospital in New York that kept getting discharged from the state hospital to the Manhattan area. They found that living with a mental illness and trying to support themselves and find jobs and move on with their lives, very difficult and many times ended up in the hospital, creating this revolving door situation that many people have heard about. So they decided to form a group together to support each other and help each other find jobs or find housing or just kind of get through some of the troubling times of their illness. And then they found that support was really quite helpful. And then eventually they linked up with a very creative social worker who thought about this clubhouse idea and having people work to support an organization and to help themselves build the skills in doing so. And that became the roots of the clubhouse and then it's been elaborated over the years to build other components on top of it. Now you said it's a peer recovery model. What exactly does that mean? Instead of focusing on a person's mental illness, the symptoms, the diagnosis, etc., peer recovery means the person themselves drives a process of recovery. What they're doing is they're working in the club, just like they would in the community, doing volunteer work that allows them to have structure, support, peer support, because peers are supporting each other. And that activity helps people begin to reclaim the skills they once had or build new skills, build their ability to function in the community successfully, and then hopefully the club then supports them in a transition to the community. And many times that support is coming from other peers who have been in the same place they have. How prevalent is this clubhouse format for mental health recovery? It's very prevalent on the East Coast of the United States. They're in the, on the East Coast, there's many, many of these clubs. On the West Coast of the United States, there's very few of these clubs. So many people on the West Coast have never heard of this idea. However, across the world, there are about 340 clubhouses in every country you can imagine. And on the, like I said earlier, on the East Coast, there's many of these clubs and they're a real kind of a central feature of outpatient support for people with mental health issues. Why do you think that mental health clubhouses are so slow to come to the West Coast? I'm just speculating here, but I was involved with the International Center for some time, so I have some information to back this. On the East Coast of the United States, Funding is quite different. The cities and counties are much more willing to support nonprofit organizations. So there's more local monies to use, and many of them have used those monies to support clubhouses. On the West Coast, most mental health services are funded by Medicaid. And Medicaid is not a good funding source for clubhouses because Medicaid is focused on symptom reduction and clinical work. So there's been much less money and less focus, really, on psychiatric rehabilitation, therefore not creating a great climate to develop clubhouses. What kind of research has been done into the clubhouse model? The clubhouse model, yes, about six years ago became an evidence-based practice, and they're now on the SAMHSA's Registry of Evidence-Based Practices. And the research that went into them that enables them to become an evidence-based practice was around helping people stay out of the hospital. There's been studies on the subjective experience a person has in the clubhouse around building their self-esteem and building their self-confidence and feeling like they're in recovery is what it's called in terms of a couple of those studies. 
There has been a couple large employment studies. So there's been studies looking at how well the clubhouse functions to help people gain employment. And clubhouses have been quite successful in that area. And I believe those are kind of the major study areas. How long have you been involved in this model? I've been involved in the clubhouse movement since 1981. I was hired as a clinician uh, in a large mental health center in Washington State. And during that time, they transitioned a day treatment program into a clubhouse, believing that would be a much more effective model. And I was introduced to Fountain House in New York City as one of the the people that were trained to help this transition happen. So I was introduced to Fountain House in New York, the first clubhouse, which was a real eye-opening experience for me and became so interesting to me that I continued to work on them for the rest of my career. So that's, if you do the math there, that's quite a few years. What kind of clinician were you at the time? I was a kind of a general social work uh, clinician working in the day treatment program, so basically doing individual therapy, psychosocial classes, groups, that kind of thing. So you've seen how effective the clubhouse model can be in an individual's life. Yes, it was, it was fascinating. Uh, that's what really got me sold on this model. We, we went to New York City as a training team. We saw this model. And I saw, you know, I had the experiences of what the, the group of people we were treating at the time at the, at the mental health center were like, what sort of symptoms they were displaying, how functional they were in the community, et cetera. And then seeing the same group of people who had the same types of illnesses in New York at Fountain House doing much better clinically and socially was pretty amazing. And then we had the chance to bring the model back. We created the model at the program. And then we literally saw the people who had been in the clinical program often not doing so well and certainly didn't seem to be moving forward in their lives very well, start to really change and become much more functional, much more connected to the community, and much more active in the community, and displaying fewer symptoms over time with this new model. So I became really kind of firsthand very interested and quite excited about continuing to see this model grow on the West Coast. What inspired your interest in social work? Can't really answer that very well. I was my desire when I got into college was to become a uh, physical education teacher, but at some point I got involved with psychology, found it quite interesting. I took some coursework in what they called a psychiatric technician in California, got that license eventually, and started working in some social service settings in California, a juvenile diversion program, and a psychiatric hospital. And I just, over, over time, I just decided it would be better to go that direction than the physical education direction. Do you experience mental illness? I do not. However, I, I certainly have had my, my own set of psychiatric problems. You know, certainly I've had depression and treatment for depression and uh, narcissistic problems and treatment for that, et cetera but never considered myself a consumer the way you might these days because many people told me that if you've not been in the state hospital or not been, not been in a hospital, you're really not a consumer. However, I was certainly a consumer of counseling services and medications for depression and those sorts of things. So you have some kind of sense of where your North Star colleagues are coming from? Yes and no. I certainly uh, remember the difficulty that my own issues caused me, the isolation I felt at times. But I believe that people who have struggled and actually ended up in the hospitals and the public mental health system have probably experienced more isolation and more stigma than I did. So I'm not sure I know exactly where they're coming from, but some sense, yes. What are some of the most transformational stories that you've seen in clubhouses in your career? Early in my career, I met this one woman that really cemented my interest and belief in this model. She was a very young woman, probably 19 or 20 years old, I would imagine, who when we first met her, talked in an extremely childlike manner 
was preoccupied with voices and her own kind of delusional beliefs to the point where she was really almost dysfunctional in the community, wasn't doing anything, certainly was unable to work, was not getting along with her family, was having extreme problems managing the symptoms, was in and out of the hospital, etc. She certainly, to any to the untrained eye, looked to be a person who maybe had uh, almost developmental type developmental disability type issues because she seemed so childlike and kind of really odd in lots of ways. But she started to come to the clubhouse and she started coming pretty regularly. And she got involved in the uh, food service operation in the clubhouse in which she belonged. And over time, the transition in her was amazing. She started to work diligently in that kitchen, preparing the lunch, working with the other people. Her demeanor started to change. Her voice started to get deeper and more what we would consider normal. Her therapist reported a remarkable change in her in therapy, and she started to get along with her family much better than she was. So her behavior started to change. Her functionality improved dramatically. Her relationships outside of the club improved. It was a remarkable transition because this was a woman who Really, the the mental health center felt that she had a really very difficult sort of issue, and they didn't know that she would be able to get better. I've talked to people here at North Star who couldn't leave their houses for years, and this was one of the first stops they made, and now they're radically different human beings. Yeah, we certainly have our own story of somebody who was in their, in their home, really unable to come out of their room for for many years. Really, at first, was very reluctant to come here and could hardly come here on her own, but eventually began to come here, get involved with the clubhouse activities, built her self-esteem, built her confidence, and eventually started getting out of her home quite a bit to come here, and then eventually started to go other places in the community. And really, she talked about uh, this being a place that totally transformed her life. Well, I don't want to make it sound like it's some kind of miracle pill because there is, these transformations do take time. But what what's going on at North Star exactly that facilitates this kind of change in someone's life? I think it's, it's a couple things. I think the structure to begin is helpful to people. I think to get out of your home and get involved with something and, and feel that you're making a contribution again is very important. But I think it's sort of being bathed in positive reinforcement, people actually recognizing what you're doing and saying you're doing a good job, helping you feel like the contribution you're making is important from the outside is also helpful at first to get a person rolling positively again And then assuming more and more responsibility is helpful. And then being offered opportunities to accept responsibilities in the community or accept different challenges in the community. And people exhibiting the belief in others that people can do that. I think that over time really becomes a powerful kind of change medium for people to be involved in. Now, when we talk about clubhouse members and they help to run the nonprofit that is the clubhouse, it's all very circular. Are they just running copies and collating things? People always ask, well, if you don't do therapy and if you don't do groups and you don't do medication, what do you do in a mental health organization? And what we're doing here at the clubhouse is just trying to allow people to be part of any part of an operation that you would need to operate any kind of a nonprofit organization. And if you think about that, that's the newsletter, the writing of brochures, for instance, operating the reception area, putting together all the forms that we use here, helping people find jobs as part of the employment area, all the different things, everything that goes on in operating this program to the extent people are willing and able and interested in, there's places for people to participate in at any level they wish. So in a real sense, they're operating this program alongside of a very small staff that 
literally would not be able to operate this program without the involvement of members. People are even writing grants and doing fundraising and keeping track of all the data that we yep. are required to report to the yep. state. It's, it's real stuff. Everybody's doing something that really helps to operate this whole program. North Star has something called transitional employment. Now, what does that mean exactly? Transitional employment was developed by clubhouses, so it's a unique type of employment program. And what it basically means is you're developing a connection with a community employer in which you're literally forming a partnership with that employer saying that we will provide individuals who are capable of doing the work you have to offer and we'll offer you some guarantees in terms of keeping that job filled, even if the staff have to come in and work that job, to your level of satisfaction and to your company standards. So what we're doing is we're trying to find employers that would offer us part-time jobs that we would keep filled for them guaranteed with members and that allows members to access employment without going through the usual rigors of applying for jobs. And for members first starts back into employment, that's a real important aspect. And it gives people opportunities for employment that are extremely valuable for them to get back into the the work market eventually. Transitional employment is not meant to be anybody's permanent job. So the jobs are relatively easy to learn. They're usually entry level. But they are meant to be a place where members can gain current references, job experience, work through some difficulties if they're having some with their illness and begin to kind of make a mark in the world of work again. What kinds of companies is North Star partnered with? If I lived on the other side of the country, if I lived in New York, would I recognize any of our partners? You probably wouldn't from the eyes of an East Coast resident. However, we are working with a lot of businesses and companies that people in our area, local to Portland, would know. For instance, we're working with Cascadia Behavioral Health Services, New Seasons Market, the Galt Foundation, Home Depot, the Moda Center, and the Portland Public School District. So certainly those are large and small organizations that are pretty familiar to most people in the Portland area. And the people that are working there from our members are working the jobs that are the usual jobs of those companies. So people are displaying good work skills to keep those jobs, forming good relationships with the other co-workers that are there. So it's working out really well so far for all the people who are working in these businesses. Now, North Star is obviously available to people in the Portland metro area. How can you look up whether or not there's a clubhouse in your area? As I mentioned earlier, clubhouses are located all over the world at this point. And if you were interested in becoming involved with a clubhouse, the organization that bonds all the clubhouses together, that's the governing body for clubhouses, is called Clubhouse International. They have a website, and on that website is a listing of all the clubhouses and where they are located throughout the world. For folks in Portland, how do they get involved in North Star? The website is northstarclubhouse.org. And basically, people can get on that website, and there's a good description of how to become involved with North Star. The basic description of how to become involved is we have an orientation here at North Star every Thursday at 2 o'clock at our building that's located at 5600 Northeast Gleason. What gets you out of bed and brings you to North Star every morning? What, what drives your continued engagement in this organization? I think some of the same things that I saw that earlier when I talked about that woman and the significant changes she made in that clubhouse, I think that continues to keep me involved in this model as we see people, they find a place to be in which they feel comfortable and in which they find other people who are like themselves and are accepting of the issues they struggle with. And in that environment, you see people begin to grow and change. And then as they begin to work in the club and build their skills, it's just really nice to see people start to feel better. A smile returns to their face. A sense of confidence comes over them. I mean, that just really continues to drive me to this day. What is one of the biggest compliments you've been paid about your work here? 
people always say this is this is a nice thing to have in this community. People need a place to go where they are recognized, are celebrated, are seen as a functional human being. It's a it's a good thing to have in a community to have a place where people who usually are pretty much ignored or shut out or ostracized in other places to have a place where they're celebrated, welcomed, and really feel like they're part of. So I think it's I think it's that that this kind of environment needs to be available in our community. If you like this video and want to support North Star, please go to northstarclubhouse.org and click donate.